in line with the topic of angels. Uh, but today we're going to uh, do uh, the angel of light. And uh, Brother Royce is going to be sharing in the teaching with me this afternoon. And he has some uh, powerful things that he's going to share. Uh, you especially want to uh, uh, pay attention uh, during his part of it because he's going to be dealing with uh, some of the things that are happening all around us and how that, uh, that the angel of light is even uh, with our uh, kids and our grandkids, how that in subtle ways, uh, the angel of light is, is sneaking in there and influencing uh, the young people. Uh, so uh, definitely uh, I'm looking forward uh, to hear what he has to say. Uh, as we begin today, uh, I want to uh, start by sharing my screen. And as uh, we share the screen here, all right. Okay. Uh, the angel of light. Uh, we find this particular passage in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14. And it says, uh, no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Now, uh, I always like to, whenever we uh, pick out a verse, uh, to put it in its context. So let's look at uh, this verse in its context. And, and those of you who received the uh, notes, uh, you have this information in your notes. Uh, so in this passage here, uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, 12 through 15, Paul is talking about false apostles. And these false apostles, uh, they deceived others by transforming themselves into the apostles of, of Christ. So, they, you know, there were some false apostles that were going around and they were teaching uh, false doctrine. And uh, Paul says that uh, these false apostles who are teaching false doctrine actually make themselves look like the real apostles. And so, you know, there was a lot of guys uh, uh, during this time going around uh, saying that they were uh, true apostles of Christ, but in essence, they were teaching false doctrine. And so now uh, Paul takes this opportunity to say like these false apostles who wanted to appear to be real apostles, uh, they were like Satan. And, and he gives this analogy, and he says that, that Satan uh, is transformed into an angel of light. And, and so uh, Satan wants us to think that he is a, a real angel of light when actually uh, he is uh, the, the deceitful one, the deceiver, and he transforms himself to like these guys were making themselves look like real apostles. They transform themselves to look like real apostles. Uh, Satan transforms himself to look like an angel of light. Now, I like what uh, John MacArthur uh, says on this passage, and he's commenting uh, directly on this passage. He says, it is no wonder that false teachers masquerade as God's servants for even Satan, the ruler of the darkness, uh, domain of darkness, and we see that in Luke 22, Ephesians 6, and Colossians 1. He disguises himself as an angel of light. It is in that disguise that he appears to the church, not the pitchfork, horns, and pointed tail of mythology. I'm going I'm to come back and say something about that a little bit later. Satan is most effective in the church when he comes not as an open enemy, but as a false friend. Not when he persecutes the church, but when he joins it. Oh, can I get an amen there? There's, uh, there's some people who have joined the church. Not Bethany. We're talking about other churches now that are Satan incarnate. 
Like I said, I'm not talking about Bethany. We talking about we talking about the other church, Crosstown. Uh, uh, not when he attacks the pulpit, uh, but when he stands in it. So uh, I like the way McArthur gives this analogy because what is he talking about? He's talking about the enemy in the church. And that's what Paul is talking about, the enemy in the church. And he says that uh, he doesn't come as an open enemy, but as a false friend. Uh, he doesn't uh, persecute, but he joins it. And he doesn't attack the pulpit, but he stands in it. Uh, so I, I, I like that there. And so he's comparing uh, Satan uh, to these false uh, apostles. Uh, now, let's look at light in the Bible. You know, why does it say that uh, he's an angel of light? Well, you know what? Uh, as, you, as you study the Bible, uh, light is a metaphor for good, for purity, and for holiness. The Bible says, God is the father of lights. What does that mean? God is the father of holiness. You know, he's the father of purity. Uh, we read in uh, John 1, uh, verses 3 through 9, that Jesus is the light of the world. In John 8, 12, uh, Jesus said that he was the light of the world. Uh, what does that mean? That, that means he lights up, uh, you know, uh, the places of darkness uh, where sin has darkened uh, somewhere that Jesus brings the light of holiness, the light of purity, the light of goodness uh, to that area. And then we see in Psalm 119, 105, that the Bible is light. Thy word is a, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So what does that mean? The, the word of God lights up the way of holiness. The, the, the word of God lights up the way of purity. It shines uh, a light on the darkness of sin. So light in the Bible is a metaphor for good purity and holiness. So it says that Satan is an angel of light. So what is he trying to do? He's trying to present himself as good, pure, and holy. Now, if you ever do a study, and we're going to do a study on Lucifer next year uh, as we look at angels, we're going to look specifically at Satan uh, and talk about, uh, you know, how he got started, how he fell, you know, what he's doing now, what his destiny is. Uh, but the word Lucifer uh, actually means light bearer. And, and we see in Isaiah 14 where Satan fell because he wanted to uh, exalt his throne above the throne of God. And so he fell uh, from, from heaven. But uh, his, be, before that, uh, his name was Lucifer. And, and the word Lucifer, the, the Hebrew word, is used in the sense of brightness. And, and some even uh, called him the morning star. Now, we know who the bright morning star is, right? Well, we know that that's Jesus. But one time, Lucifer was the bright star, was the morning star, all right? And, and so, uh, actually, his name taken in Latin actually means light bearer. So, uh, you just going back to the previous page, uh, a slide, light in the Bible was a metaphor for good, purity, and holiness, and as we look at Lucifer, originally, he was what? He was light. He was a light bearer. So uh, what is he trying to do? You know, he's, he, he tries to imitate that original position that he had of, of light. And so uh, Paul says that we know that even Satan can be transformed into an angel of light because initially, he was the light bearer. And wow, can you think uh, about that? That at one point he was uh, in heaven uh, representing light, representing purity and, and holiness. And then uh, he fell from that. Uh, Satan tries to counterfeit the shining brilliance of angelic beings. Now, again, well, I'm going to say something about that in a second. But, but notice uh, some appearances of angels in the Bible. Uh, the angels were at the tomb of Jesus, and they had clothes that gleam like lightning. Okay, so these angels appeared in light and brightness. 
When Cornelius saw an angel, he was dressed in shining clothes, uh, Acts chapter 10 and verse 30. Uh, and in the book of Revelation, we see that angels had faces that shine like the sun. So uh, angelic appearances upon this earth, when angels have appeared on this earth, uh, often uh, they appear in, in light and brilliance. Now look at this. Watch this. Watch this one. I'm getting ready to show you here. All right. In Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 14, Satan, whose name, as we already said, was Lucifer. He was called in Ezekiel 28, 14, the anointed cherub, the anointed cherub. This means that he had a place of special recognition in heaven. He had a place of special recognition in heaven as the anointed cherub. Uh, that, that word anointed there means outstretched wings. Uh, that he he was recognized as uh, as one who was was large in heaven, right? Uh, a, a large angel, anointed angel. But now, saints, look at this as we go on and read Ezekiel twenty eight in verse thirteen. Look at this as a an, a perfect angelic being. He was radiantly covered. Look at this now, saints, with every precious stone. The sardis, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. That he was covered with these things. Now, just think with me for a moment. If he was covered with these things, what does that mean? That means he was a wonderful representation of light, right? I mean, if you think about it. These, these stones uh, and these uh, diamonds and, and how the reflection you know, would have just been brilliant. It would have been radiant. And so even in heaven, he had this, this, this appearance of brilliant radiance, right? As the anointed cherub. When he rebelled against the Lord, Ezekiel goes on to tell us, that his radiance was exchanged for violence and corruption. Now, he can only masquerade as an angel of light. Wow. Look, look, look from where he fell. And, and now uh, we see why he has the power to be transformed into an angel of light. Because this was his status at one point. He enjoyed the, the privileges of being uh, the, the light, one of the lights in heaven. You know, when you think about uh, e eternity, uh, that the Bible says that we're not going to uh, have any light. There's not going to be any light. Uh, wow. There's not going to be any light in eternity. Yeah, that's what I said. Isn't that, That's going to be awful dark in eternity if there's no light. But remember what Revelation said. It said that God and Christ, they are the light. And there will be no need for light. There'll be no need for the sun. There'll be no need for the moon because the Father and the Son will light up. My, my, my. That's good preaching right there. That sounds like a sermon to me. Uh, the Father and the Son, that they will light up eternity. So we will have no need for light in eternity. And, and, and so uh, at one point, Maybe Satan, uh, Lucifer, was an individual that provided a certain degree of light. But when he rebelled, he exchanged the, the anointed cherub status, the brilliant radiance of his appearance. He exchanged that for violence and corruption. So now, what, what can he do? The only thing he can do. He can make himself appear uh, as an angel of light in order to deceive. Uh, if, if he appears uh, as some dark, evil creature, that would not be very appealing to most people, right? If, if, if he came with uh, uh, a red suit and pointed ears and uh, a tail with a pitchfork, how many people? I mean, most, but now there's some people, let's be honest, 
there are some people that want to worship the devil. Uh, I, I don't know if you remember, uh, there was a commercial one. I haven't seen it on uh, recently, but I think it was last year, a commercial about uh, the devil, and it was about a dating website. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a, uh, about a dating site. And uh, he was actually uh, trying to get dates. And he, got, he actually got this date with this lady, and she fell in love with him, right? And he was uh, dressed up in, in, in the devil's garb, right? He had the, the, uh, the pointed ears, and he had all the features of, of the devil. So, you know, there are some people that want to worship the devil and they don't care what form that, that, that it comes in, what shape he takes, that they want to worship the devil. But let's be honest, most people, uh, when they see those characters of the devil with pointed ears, red suit, uh, you know, like I, I always say, like the man on the hot sauce bottle, right? You know, we like to put the hot sauce on our mac and cheese and we like to put the hot sauce on our greens, right? And, 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 and we get the hot sauce uh, uh, with the devil on the bottle, right? Mm. <laughs> I'm going to invent a hot sauce with an angel on it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding, right? Uh, but we get the hot sauce with the devil on it, right? And he's all, uh, he's in character on the hot sauce bottle. And, and so if, if, if the devil appeared like that, most of us uh, would not see that as being appealing. And we wouldn't be drawn to him but if he appears as an angel of light right and, and remember if he appears as something pure and and good and holy if he appears uh that way then we will find ourselves uh drawn to him because why you know most people are drawn drawn to the light you know we want to uh draw close to the light when when, when there's light around so you know we're, we're not going to draw close to the devil if if we see him for who who he is all right. So what does he do? He disguises himself as an angel of light. Uh, I like this right here. Satan is like Hallmark. Uh, when you care uh, enough to send only the very best, that when he comes to tempt, especially when he comes to tempt believers, uh, when he comes, you know, he's going to come as that buffed, good looking dude. Right. You know, he's going to come as that uh, the beautiful lady, right? Uh, he, he's going to come uh, uh, in that shining, uh, whatever it is that, that, that we will be attracted to. All right. Why? Because he's like Hallmark. He, he cares enough to send only the very best. And, and we need to uh, keep that in mind. All right. Uh, Satan, now he tries to counterfeit the power of God. Okay. He tries to uh, counterfeit uh, God's power uh because he don't have he don't have power uh, all power right uh, uh god god has all power satan has power but god has all power and and so he tries to counterfeit god's power and in acts 8 uh 5 through 25 we read about uh the conversion of a a, a man uh, named simon who was a sorcerer and he possessed magical powers and he used them to astonish people now, now watch this, saints, because I'm going somewhere with this. He, he most likely used many of the things in Deuteronomy 18 that forbids witchcraft and necromancy and Ouija boards and all that stuff. But he probably used a lot of those things uh, to enchant the people. Now, notice what they said. He claimed to be some great uh, and uh, uh, man of God, great power. And look what the people said. This man is the great power of God, right? Even though he did his work through demons, people attributed it to the power of God. This is the great power of God, they said. Satan had, Satan had counterfeited the power of God. Like I said, Satan has power. He doesn't have all power, but he has some power. And so he comes as the angel of light. And when he, oh my goodness, when he comes as the angel of light, what does he do? He counterfeits the power of God, right? He, he, he makes himself to be able to do things that, uh, that God can do, right? Uh, Satan, as an angel of light, he works in ways to counterfeit the power of God. And many in the world are su uh, susceptible. Uh, Paul said in Ephesians uh, 6, 11, uh, beware of the tricks the schemes, 
the vices of the devil. Beware of his vices. And one of the things that he can do as an angel of light, he can counterfeit the power of God. Uh, why does Satan disguise himself as an angel of light? So I've already talked about this right here. But let me just go over it once again. People are drawn to the light. Therefore, Satan appears as an angel of light. If he walked around in a red suit with pointed ears, a tail, and carrying a pitchfork, most people would recognize him and put their guard up. Or if he appeared as some dark, evil creature, that would not be very appealing to the majority of people. In the process of deception, Satan puts uh, forth his most appealing demeanor. So he, he's going to come again as what? The angel of light. Uh, the reasons that uh, Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So let me give you four reasons uh, why he disguises himself as an angel of light. To present something evil as something beautiful. So pornography. You know, uh, people think pornography is beautiful. You know, they think that's something that's desirable, right? But it's evil, all right? E even the word uh, pornos right, is evil. The word porn is evil in, in graphic writings or pictures. E you know, even the word pornography, evil pictures, right? <laughs> so what does Satan do? He presents something evil as something beautiful, all right? Uh, he presents something harmful as something innocent. And, and this uh, Royce is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him speak here in a second, but Royce is gonna talk about this. He's gonna talk about how that the devil takes things that are harmful and he makes them innocent and he gets people sucked in uh, to these things. He presents something untrue as truthful. And so Paul was dealing with this with the false doctrines, right? These, these false apostles that were in the church. They were presenting something that was untrue as something that was truthful, the angel of light, right? And then present something wrong as the will of God. Uh, you know, so many people today think that uh, cohabitation is, is the will of God. Well, you know, I, you know, I heard, you know, somebody saying, you probably heard this before, that you need to uh, uh, milk the cow and drink the milk before you buy it, right? So a lot of people use that as a justification for cohabitation, say, well, I believe that God would have us to do this to find out if we're right for each other, right? Angel of light, angel of light, same sex uh, relationships, you know, the angel of light. So we see the, the angel of light uh, and, and how he disguises himself and he's getting people to swallow it, hook, line, sinker, boat, lake, and landscape right he you know people are buying it wholesale and they're and they're giving in uh to this angel of light now let me see something here okay uh so i'm going to uh at this time you know uh naomi if you can uh i'm gonna i'm gonna stop sharing and if you can uh allow royce to be able to share at this time and then i'll come back Hello. and uh and wrap things up okay royce you can share Hello, family. Um, I just wanted to, I want to start off with uh, Genesis 3, 4 and 5, just to, the serpent. He told, he told Eve, you shall surely not die. Your eyes shall be opened. You should be as gods, knowing good and evil. It said that she she seen the fruit from them. She seen the fruit. She seen it as good, pleasant to the eyes, and to be desired to make one wise. Paul said in Second Corinthians eleven three, the serpent beguiled Eve through subtlety. Said um, and and so can our minds be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Um, and we got a lot of that going on right now. But 
In James 1, 1, 14, it says, man can only be drawn away of his own lust, of your own desires. And our people, we are a desire, we are a lustful nation. And we, ch we chase after our own desires and we grow more and more in that direction. So we work through the cinematic universe and entertainment. And if we go through there, I mean, if you're saved, a lot of that, a lot of that can be harmless. So you think. So here's an example. The subtle approaches and bright colors and friendly faces distract from underlying deceit and ongoing laughter. SpongeBob. Everybody loves SpongeBob. Lives in a pineapple under the sea. The number one cartoon in the country. In this cartoon, they praised the sea god Neptune. Who, who knew that? I know that because I was raised on SpongeBob. The, these are these are tools that the enemy uses in our youth. We integrate, we, we see, I, I watch, I watch movies. I watch a lot of movies. I see more and more, they integrate more violence. They call it action, blood, sex in films. The constant, the constant attack of love. There's, there's a, there's a really, there's a big ongoing attack on the concept of, on the principle of love portrayed as carnal, physical, glorifying romance, sensuality, se even sex of manners, homosexuality, the marriage, their marriages. Um, there are even LG, uh, excuse me, uh, churches. There are churches, they have churches, they do. And, and, and it blinds, it's blinding because the enemy feeds off of our emotions. If you're drawn away of your own lust, that means that you are the only thing that's standing between you and your salvation. So the Marvel, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, as we know, which is, is probably arguably the, the the largest impact on our youth, arguably. They've turned superheroes into gods. And the gods of this earth, children idolize them. Children want to be them. When one of these superheroes in real life die, the, the death of Chadwick Bosman, rest in, in, in rest in peace. If, if the rooting of our foundation in our children was God, the impact of his death, but there was so much malice in children. There was so much energy. There was, so, there was children crying on social media. There was children crying. The loss of a superhero. Okay, so. We strayed, we strayed away from the triumph that is true. We have adopted fiction so heavily and it, it consequently creates an obstacle between them and God. It's, on, it's another thing to unlearn. It says, uh, second, second, second Chronicles 32, 19, um, which is uh, the, I believe it's, it's the battle of the Assyrians and, and, and Israel. And um, so they went, they went and they spoke to Hezekiah. And this is 19. They spoke of God as against the God, the gods of the other people of the world, the work of the hands of men. So 
and excuse me. Sorry, I got interrupted. Sorry, but they they spoke as they spoke of God as against the gods of the people of the world. These gods are the hands of men. So there's a new movie that just came out, and it's called The Eternals, and we study we study the angels. It was just, I, I know God put me in that theater because when I, when I went there, I went with my family and I was studying with pastor. And as I was studying the works of angels, the works of God through the works of angels, as I was doing all that, the eternals is exact, is the exact thing. It almost fits exactly what I was studying, but it doesn't glorify God. It gives superheroes and deities divine intervention. It gives them uh, it, it, it gives them abilities to plant plant engineering in your head as, as the angel as, as the work of God. It's this is crippling to anyone that learns this without a foundation. Crippling. These movies, everything I just named is for an audience under 16. I, we, we don't even are responsive and therefore if they're teaching if they're teaching these things in our youth, then we need to teach and train our children earlier in the foundation. So there's an example, I have an example. In ancient uh, Greece, uh, Sparta, they, they were a war people. They, they, they always fought and they were excellent at it. So from birth, they were, their males were sanctioned off to uh, almost an appraiser of which once he gave his dossier of the, the child, the child was put into immediate training to be a soldier. From birth, this child was made to be armed against all that opposed his nation. We are supposed to be like that for God. Mm. The, these, the, there's too much, there's too much that is in that gap of a newborn to the age of 16. There's too much in that gap to not be speak, to not teach, to not teach spiritual warfare, but spiritual warfare is in following the commandments, keeping them in your heart. It says in Proverbs three, it says Proverb, Proverbs three, one, keep his commandments in your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding and always acknowledge him. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. I like I like I like fear. I love I love I like I like fear because when I first heard it, uh, you know, when I was reading, I was like, you know, we got to be afraid of God. And, and and I mean, yes, in all terms, I mean, if, if you won't be afraid of anybody, that that's your fear. It says fear not multiple times as if it's a command. But in this, fear is, in the Hebrew, translates to reverence as far as re respecting God and, and thinking about him in all things that we do. This is how I know, this is another example. In, in Japanese and Asian culture, they have anime. In anime, they teach spiritual warfare to their youth through cartoons. 
these this spiritual warfare, the, how they fight demons and in, in possession and in, in these shows. And I will list the shows after I tell you what they do. Um, they they uh, they miss the principle because they take the latter approach as far as spiritual warfare with summoning and enchantments and incantations and blood rituals or or a moral sense of pride or lust as motivation or um, casting out a demonic influence with our own authority. If, if I'm, and, and, and I don't, you know, I know what the, the gospel says about doing those things, but I don't know what their, their culture teaches, but I know that anime is very popular in, in America, of which my family loves. Oh, every, um, there's a lot of people I know that quote anime more than scripture. Mm. That, that there's okay, so these are just oh, and also, I'm sorry, I forgot one. They make idols out of male malevolent spirits fairies and demons they, they they make these things they, they make these things beautiful did i don't know if you've ever seen cosplay cosplay is a thing and, and and people can go and say that they don't idolize these demons or not but if i'm dressing up if i'm dressing up as as anubis because that's my favorite character on a show. Isn't that your idol? You don't under you you may not understand the depths of the character. You might understand the roles, and that's why the foundation is so important for the children. I encourage, I encourage even sitting down, sit down with your grandkids, sit down with your, your children, and just watch what they watch. And see if it glorifies God. I looked. I looked before this. I looked up um, cartoons um, from the uh, you know L community. Sorry, but I looked up the, the shows that are cartoon friendly for the L G community, and what they said was. Amazing. It, it was amazing because most of them are on Cartoon Network. Most of them are currently on. And most of them are really popular. There was even a show. That, I mean, I don't know if you watch it, but I'm sure your kids do. And then Loud House, they get two dads. I mean, we teach them, teach, them, teach them with two dads. Teaching a relationship with two dads. Teaching, teaching love that way. Teaching carnality that way. It's it's all it's all before. So so by the time you get old and start making decisions and having responsibilities, the work is already in the 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 that that seed of deception is already planted in your brain. We, we have to we have to teach against it. We have to early. It says in Second Corinthians ten five. It's one of my casting one of my favorite casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It says, and, and I'll, I'll bring up a little bit, just, just against incantations and witchcraft and such. Um, I, I just, it said in second, first, first Samuel 28, saw so, he 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 so he uh he was seeking the face of God. God had he had already disobeyed, and uh, his, the will was already done. The will was already written once he did that. And so he went and and so uh, he was seeking a witch to see the face of Samuel again to get more guidance. And he'd probably plead and beg for for forgiveness somehow, some way. Um. It says in Chronicles that he died because of that. 
It said, it said um, in 1 Kings 18, 28 and 29, Elijah versus the bells when it, when he was uh, when it was submerging the bullets. The bells were, they were cutting themselves, gushing with blood, trying to conjure, trying to conjure something that would set that, that mount on fire. They were cutting themselves. This is this is what this is what that Japanese culture th these shows sorry Dragon Ball Z Demon Slayer Full Metal Alchemist Seven Deadly Sins There's many more There's many more and and I, I the reason why I know them is because I was crazy with them. these are these are shows that if you turn on the television and you have the remote you have access to my 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 parents didn't sit down with me. And, and watch everything that I watch. I don't even, I don't even have that relationship with my parents now. We don't even sit down and watch dinner. I mean, we watch, watch movies for dinner. We don't even sit down at the table. They, they don't know. But I encourage us as believers to take that step, to take more of those steps, because if we don't, we will lose them. It says, um, the Bible teaches, love not the world. This is First John 2, 15. Neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The world, 16, this is 16, is the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. The pride of life is not the Father, but is of the world. The world passes away, and the lust thereof but he that does the will of God abideth forever. It says, um, I also wanted to share this. Um, Colossians 2.8. It says, um, the world is hollow, deceptive, has hollow and deceptive philosophy and empty deceit based on human tradition and elements of the world rather than Christ. But yeah, that was that was my time. Thank you. That was my time. All right, all right, man. That was uh, that's some powerful stuff, bro. You know, man, you kind of uh, uh, left me here uh, with a lot to think about. And, you know, as I was listening to you, you know, I was thinking how that all that stuff that you said uh, is, is what we're talking about, the angel of light. Uh, very uh, appealing to uh, the individuals. Uh, and and I'm, I'm, let, let me go back to my uh, share the screen and... And, and, and let's kind of put in perspective uh, some of the things that uh, that Royce just said, uh, let me see here. Okay, just just let's let's consider this uh, that why why does Satan disguise himself as an angel of light to present something evil as something beautiful, right? And that's what Royce was talking about that that this is very appealing to to the young people, to present something harmful as something innocent, you know, and uh, actually, I, you know, I like one thing that, that Roy said was that, you know, if, if they're getting this stuff from the uh, cradle until they're 16 years old, you know, it's already been embedded. And, you know, that their, that their character, their thoughts, their mind has been shaped around uh, around these things. And so, you know, we need to see that uh, the angel of light is at work uh, and uh, very, very deceptive. Uh, so, you know, how do we tell the difference between the a true angel of light and Satan or even demonic forces? Uh, how do we tell the difference? Well, 
the first thing is that you got to test it against the word of God. That, that's why I say, uh, I think that whenever we uh, have a chance, and, and, and that's what is like grieves my spirit right now, is that, you know, our, our church pretty much is closed as far as, uh, you know, other than worship services. And our kids, man, you know, our, our, our kids are being, you know, I, I mean, this is, you know, you take this last two years that, and think about our kids that they haven't, some of them haven't even been exposed to the word, right? But, but yet and still, you know, during the, the shutdown, you know, they probably watched a bunch of TV. They probably watched a bunch of those shows that, uh, that Royce was talking about. And so that stuff is going into them every day. But, you know, the, the church hasn't been able to input the word of God in their lives. So thank God for godly parents, godly grandparents, who continue to make sure that their kids and, and grandkids are exposed to the word. Amen. Amen. Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light un unto my path. The angel of light, Satan, wants to bring darkness, but the word of God exposes the darkness of Satan. So let's make sure, uh, not only uh, for the kids, uh, but let's make sure we keep exposing our souls uh, to the word of God, to the light of God's Lord. word. Psalm 119, 105, again, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, that the light, it shines, uh, it shines the, the brighter way. Uh, walk in the light by fellowshipping with the Lord. Uh, let, me, let me read uh, this passage. This is a powerful passage. This is a very powerful passage. Uh, 1 John 1, 5 through 7. This then is the message which we have heard. And this is in your notes, if you have your notes, which we have heard of him and declare unto you. Look at this. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. The closer we walk in fellowship with the Lord, we become more exposed to the light and we are able mm -hmm. to distinguish mm -hmm between the true light and the satanic light. Be on the lookout for the deceptive ways of the devil. First Peter chapter five and verse eight, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That he is uh, the angel of light. He seeks, to, he not only seeks to deceive as the angel of light, but he also seeks to devour as a roaring lion. So look, look, look at those uh, double uh, images. Uh, angel of light to deceive, roaring lion to destroy. Angel of light to deceive, roaring lion to destroy. Be on the lookout for the deceptive ways of the devil. And, and as uh, Royce pointed out, you know, he's an angel of light you know, as, as, as these uh, innocent uh, uh, TV shows, cartoons, you know, uh, these are all innocent, right? But that's the, that's, that's the way that he wants to present it, uh, deceptive. And then what? He's like a roaring lion. He, he, once he deceives you, then, you know, he wants to take you down. He, he wants to uh, destroy you. And then we've been looking at on Sunday mornings, uh, the armor of God. And I've been doing a series on the armor. You know, we got through uh, and we got two pieces left this Sunday. You know, we're going to uh, cover the, the last two pieces this Sunday. But uh, when you put on that armor of God, that you can uh, notice the difference uh, between a true angel of light and, and Satan. Uh, God will give you discernment. And so even in your notes, uh, I have a prayer that, that I've written and I call it a spiritual warfare prayer. So uh, in, 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 in this spiritual warfare prayer, it prays the armor of God. It prays through each 
each piece uh, to let us know that if we have God's armor on, that uh, we can be uh, aware of the schemes and the tricks of, of the devil. Uh, so uh, as we looked at it today, the angel of light, uh, you know, we've uh, done a teaching uh, on that. So there should be, uh, for us who, who were here on this study this afternoon, uh, uh, you know, we should not uh, be deceived by the Satan, the angel of light. And we should know his, his tactics and know when he's trying to infiltrate and, and influence. Uh, you know, I, I think of uh, another thing that Roy said, and I know many of us, you know, uh, we can't do this. Maybe, you know, our grandkids, you know, we don't have them on a regular basis. And, you know, maybe we don't have, uh, you know, our kids are all grown. Uh, but I, 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 one thing I, I appreciate him saying is that, you know, uh, that an adult, especially, you know, with these kids that are five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old, that an adult probably needs to sit down with them and watch some of these programs. Because, you know, I, I, I know uh, my grandson, he comes over to my uh, house every weekend. Uh, you know, we watch him uh, uh, during the weekend. And, uh, you know, we've had to tell him, uh, you know, man, it's, <laughs> should you be watching that program? You know, you need to turn that one off. And, uh, and so, you know, there, there are just some things that, uh, that kids on their own, uh, you know, they're not going to be aware of. And that's why, you know, adults need to, you know, uh, uh, give supervision to some of these things and, and not them just not let just them have free reign of the remote, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there. And, and if these kids are constantly being bombarded with this, and the word of God is not being put in. Where, where, where is the counterbalance? Where is uh, that which is going in to negate some of these things that, that they're being exposed to? Uh, and again, it's the angel of light. You know, the angel of light makes this stuff look so good. And, uh, and yet and still, you know, we've seen uh, the end purpose the, and the end game that the angel of light has. All right, I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to... Uh, give you the opportunity to ask me or, or Royce a, uh, a question. You know, we got uh, probably about uh, 10 minutes left. Uh, so uh, anybody that has a uh, question. No. Hi, I didn't know about anime until this summer. Found out that this is a girl, but she has this Im immor immortality in her. She never dies. And they had this very large convention in New York. And I think it's one of the largest conventions going now, even bigger than the furries. And they have an issue with them in their own right. And the furries, for y'all that don't know, is those people that come to Pittsburgh every year and dress up in the animal, dress up like animals. And that's a whole nother kind of um, demonic thing when you really search it out. So I just wanted to reinforce what Brother Roy said, I think it was a very good teaching. I found out it through my granddaughter and she was 15 at the time. She's 16 now. So that's how I got to finding out about a lot of this stuff. 